Now, these are the steps that I would recommend you do, and these are the steps that me and Thierry are going through with his first investment. Number one, run the numbers. Number two, research. Number three, get proof of income and expense. Number four, go view the property. Number five, question the tenants. Number six, get a renovation quote, if applicable. So when you're running the numbers, um, obviously I hope that you use our app, which is the www.mypropertyapp.online. And you want to be looking at mostly these kind of metrics. You want to see your gross yield, which will tell you if an area might cash flow positively or not. Your return on investment, which is your buying decision. Remember, if you get a, let's say, a 10% ROI on a property deal and you're getting a 10% interest rate at the bank, those two are on the same level, which basically means that you should rather leave your money in the bank because the bank is safer. But if you're getting a 10% interest in your bank account and your opportunity of a property is bringing you 20 or 30%, it makes more sense to take your money out of the bank and invest it into the property deal. And that's where you've got to balance your risk versus reward. Rate of return is when you're looking at a long-term property transaction and then obviously you want to make sure that you've got an exit strategy. So you might be buying a property to hold and rent out, but how would it work as a flip? How would you be able to exit that deal if things went wrong? Because you know, as great as property is as an investment asset, it's not always um, risk-free. If you're doing area research, I recommend a tool called TPN. Uh, what you're seeing here on the right are just some snapshots of a TPN report. The report tells you what the rental price trends are. So you can see what an average price would be for a rental uh, sectional title or freehold property. You can see the rental price index. So um, what are the chances of the prices escalating? So could the rent go up in value next year? You can also see what your... Um, payment profile is of your tenants. So are they uh, low risk or high risk um, tenants? And then you can see some property transactions, the number of properties that have sold and what the average price was. So it just gives you some sense of what the risks are, the demographics, the affordability of your tenants, the average rent and any applicable escalations. Proof of income and expense. This is critical, guys. When you're, when you're starting out the property journey, your estate agent is going to be your main source of, of information. So you're going to go and look on property 24, you're going to look for a deal and the state agent's going to say, yeah, you can make 20,000 Rand rent. You can make 50, you can make a hundred thousand Rand rent. Now remember the state agent is motivated by commissions to try and get you to make a decision. So I'm not saying that they do this, but they might, uh, you know, tell you what they think you want to hear to help you make a decision. So yes, on your, when you're first looking at a deal, you have to trust what the state agent says. But over time, you want to be able to say, no, well, you need to be able to prove that I can make 100,000 Rand rent. You have to prove that this is what the rates and taxes are. You have to prove to me what the levies are. And guys, there is proof like that. If you look here on the bottom left, this is a uh, rent roll. So this is a proof of income for a block of flats that... Um, Thierry and I went to go and look at so you can see what the deposits are what the rent total is what the parking is so we can see some sort of proof that yes we can make 35,720 Rand in terms of income off this deal and on the right hand side you're seeing proof of an expense this is a snip, snippet of a COJ bill so I can see very clearly what the rates and taxes are the water expense the electrical expense the sewage expense right because you know, running the numbers is important, but if you're running the wrong numbers, then you're not making an educated or informed decision. So running your numbers with qualified proof of income and proof of expense is critical. The, th the fourth thing you want to do when you're doing your due diligence is go and view the property. Now, this is one of the, one of the properties that um, Thierry and I went to go and view. It's 40 units, <laughs> so it's a massive little development. There you can see Thierry with the state agent. Um, and we're just pretty much going through the property to see, you know, what's happening. So this is really important, guys. You, I don't recommend you buy a property without viewing it. Uh, maybe if you're an experienced investor and, and you've got a good builder who you trust to go and view the property. But otherwise, always, always, always go view the property. And I must just commend Thierry for, for flying through to Joburg um, last weekend with me from Cape Town. Um, he, he's, he's into the, the rental strategy and unfortunately the rental strategy doesn't work in Cape Town or at least I haven't found the right area for it. So, you know, he's interested in investing and he's committed to making the flight to Joburg to go and really 
make this real. So I think that's really cool. So that's number four, view the property. Number five of your due diligence process is you have to question the tenants. Okay. One of my favorite things to do is when I'm looking at a rental property or looking at buying a, an apartment is to ask the tenant some questions. Things like, how long have you stayed here? Okay, that gives you a sense of, you know, um, whether they, they plan to stay for longer or if they've been a good tenant. If they've just moved in, then I'm not sure if this is going to be a good tenant or a bad tenant and I have to factor that risk into my calculation. If they've been there for five, six, seven years and I can see some some past uh, bank statements of them paying regularly on time, I know it's a good tenant and I can de-risk my numbers. Are you employed? Very important question for how long and where. You know, so if they're employed, where are they employed? Maybe phone the employer and just make sure that they're employed, make sure that they're earning the salary that can justify the rent that you might charge. Um, anything you want to change? One of the most important questions because, again, the estate agent might tell you that the house is just perfect, you know, that there's no problems, but the, 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 tenant, the tenant has no reason to lie to you. You know, if there is some damp problems, the tenant's going to tell you, yeah, there's some damp issues. If uh, the geezer isn't working for whatever reason, the tenant's going to tell you. If the doors are broken or there's something wrong with the property, trust me, the tenant is going to open their mouth and you get a better sense of what you're actually buying. Number four, do you feel safe? Very important. I want to know that the tenant feels safe and comfortable. If they don't feel safe, then you might be buying in the wrong area or, again, factor that into your numbers and, and, and adjust for that risk. And then the final question I would ask is, would you recommend your friends to live here? And if the answer is no, again, you have to question, is this the right area? Is this the right kind of investment that I want to buy? If not, how can I, how can I de-risk myself? This is all about risk. Risk and reward. That's the business that we're in. Thanks for watching another video with us. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you're interested in learning more about how you can become financially free through property, here are two steps. Firstly, please go and get a copy of my book. You can get it at Exclusive Books, Amazon, or Take A Lot. If you're interested in getting more practical with property, perhaps you want to join our online university or you want to get a one-on-one -on -one coaching experience, please go to my website, www.lawrencebull.com and don't forget to subscribe.